What's up guys, David one two and two and it's list day. Ah yes, list day, and today we're gonna be looking at the top five worst cards in Ghost from the Past. Ghost from the Past was a really hyped up set here in the TCG because it looks kind of like one of those premium gold little box things. So I guess everyone thought there was gonna be a ton of really cool reprints in this in this set that people are gonna want, and there's gonna be tons of cool chase cards. It's all gonna be in weird ghost rare and things like that, and it'll be freaking awesome. Instead, it was like a bunch of weird archetype cards and basically a glorified deck building set with like Dark Magician and Blue Eyes as ghost rares. Cause you know what we need in the TCG? More prints of Blue Eyes White Dragon. But it's not all doom and gloom. We got evenly matched. But the set was decidedly lacking any kind of real power chase cards, like Extravagance or something, maybe maybe Lightning Storm, just anything that somebody would want. So if you don't want to play one of the deck buildy archetypes that are in the set, the, you're not going to buy it, and that's annoying. So we're going to look at the top five worst cards in the set, the ones that uh, if you do decide to buy this thing, you're going to be upset to get. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, the first one is a big vanilla. This card came out when I was a child, and I I don't think I've ever pronounced it out out loud. Hyo Zen Zanaru, Hyo Zanaru. This thing. Also, you could probably say Sinyaru is on on the on this as well. Uh, but it's kind of part of the Starry Night archetype, kind of. The Starry Night archetype debuts in this set, and it revolves around level seven light dragon monsters. Nowhere that I could find in any of the card text specify it needs to be a vanilla level seven light dragon. So why you would play Sinyaru or its weird defense mode brother Hi Hayo, Hi Hayo Miyazaki. May all your bacon burn. Really, really is, uh, really strange. Literally in this set, we get a reprint of Arc Brave Dragon. Why wouldn't you run that one? That one does a thing. Also, if you do plan on running Sinyaru in your Starry Night deck, any kind of real man's gonna run, like, the, the video game promo from back in, like, 2003. Not this... <laughs> Not this, not the one that comes in the set. Who gives a shit about that? Any kind of real man. Number four is Meteor Black Comet Dragon. You know what Comet Dragon's biggest sin is? It's not Slash Dragon or Dragoon. <laughs> it's incredibly disrespectful. It's just the other one. What do? I actually have no idea. Level 8 Dark Dragon with 3500 attack and uh, 20, 20 hunt, 20 hundred. 20 hundred defense. F***ing idiot. 35 big number though. This thing is made of one level 7 red eyes monster and one level 6 dragon monster. It's basically an effect retrained of Meteor Black Dragon. The card's actually not terrible, you just aren't gonna run it. And uh, in the limited card pool that is the set, it's one of the more like, why that one kind of cards. If this card is fusion summoned, you can send one Red-Eyes monster from your hand or deck to the graveyard. Hopefully deck, because otherwise you're just nagging yourself for no reason. And if you do, you can inflict damage to your opponent equal to half that monster's original attack. So like 1200 or something. Clearly meant for a more pure Red-Eyes Black Dragon deck, as evidenced by the fact that it has some sort of weird burn effect, <laughs> because part of that deck is a burn deck. The other part's Gemini. It's, uh, I... Honestly, don't think Konami knew what they wanted the Red Eyes deck to do, so they had to do everything. Nothing well. You could probably close out a game with it, so you might run one? But like, all the other Red Eyes fusion targets are like, better than this thing, except for the vanillas. <laughs> so, uh, run at your own risk. Alright, we're gonna dump on the Starry Knights proper with Starry Knight Blast. This normal trap card has the following effect. When your opponent activates a card or effect, return one level 7 light dragon monster you control to your hand. Negate the effect and if you do, destroy it. Okay, so that's a good card. It is an in archetype, probably searchable, I didn't read them. <laughs> Infernity Barrier. Uh, so you might be thinking, But Dave, negation is good! And because it's an archetype card, it's probably searchable! I mean, I didn't read any of these cards, but still! <laughs> and you'd be right! Except for the fact, it's a normal... It's a normal trap card. Why? It's not... It's not that bad of a card, it's just their Starry Knights aren't great, and... It's a spell speed 2 trap card. The best thing about things like Infernity Barrier are their counter trap cards. Your opponent can't respond to them except with other counter traps, which they probably don't have. The fact that it's a spell speed 2 means uh, your opponents could use a monster to stop your, your trap card. That is uh, 
oddly clunky. It's things like this where I'm like, wow, Konami, could you could you be more transparent when you make some decks just not as good as others? You gave the deck an in-theme negation card and you made it a you made it a normal trap. But it's just a weird thing to do. Number two is a card I just learned existed. Ixie Burst! A normal spell card! If you control a rank 6 or higher XC monster, destroy all set cards your opponent controls. Wow, that's, uh, specific. When this card came out, it was probably okay, because we didn't have Regeki or Harpy's Feather Duster legal, most likely, so any kind of mass destruction card is going to be at least inherently useful. However, this one stinks, because it requires your deck to be working before you do it. The best time to play all of your nuke the board cards is before you do anything, so if your opponent's got something to respond with, they don't. Surprise, motherfucker. Nothing like getting your normal summon negated when it's like the linchpin of your deck, all because you couldn't just nuke their back row first. And it is back row, because this thing says set cards. At least it has the common decency to set like your opponent's face down man eater bug, I guess. But like, let's be real, it's most likely destroying back row back row that probably prevented you from making a rank six play anyway. Why did they reprint this? Like, I get that, like, it's old and probably needed one, technically speaking, but who gave a shit about this? This is weird. This is a really random card. Like, like, seriously, what is this? Ghost from the past or Goatsy from the past? <laughs> All right. And we got a disarmable mention, boys. The dishonorable mention is Ghosts from the Past. Why? Well, one, Ghosts from the Past is, is, is it's not a very good trap card. Uh, what does this even do? Banish two monsters from your graveyard, target and attack a solution monster in a field, and change its attack to zero. This would be okay in Duel Links at best. Well, why are you pulling me? I'm right! But more importantly is it's not in the set Ghosts from the Past. Seriously, you had you had, you had one job, Konami. Make a set called Ghosts from the Past, put the card Ghosts from the Past in it, and print it as a ghost. So you'd have a ghost rare ghost from the past from Ghosts from the Past. <laughs> like, come on! If you have the option to go for the meme choice, always go for the meme choice. The player base will like it, even if it's stupid. How many people bought Scramble Egg for, for Pete's sake? Because it's a meme. Come on, Jerome, what the hell are you doing over there, man? Like, I should work for this company. Damn. All right, guys, before we get to number one, just a quick shout out to my sponsor, MetaMats. Use my promo code TROLLMETA at checkout to get like 10% off your custom cloth playmat. This is like the Shadal one. This one's just really cool. So, and it's like that fun material. I love, I love MetaMats. Where's my, where's my MetaMat waifu pillow, Dave? <laughs> That's my contact. Simu waifu body pillow when? So go check them out, guys. All right, number one, the best for last, the biggest wallist of text, Vampire Voivode. What is a Voivode? Voivode is a title denoting a military leader or warlord in Central, Southern, and Eastern Europe since the early Middle Ages. Vampire Hemorrhoid here is a level 8 dark zombie monster with 2800 attack and 2100 defense. My new light Ryan gave me is blinding the shit out of me. <laughs> ah, I'm really well illuminated, but I also can't see crap. Alright, level 8. Keep that in mind. If this card is normal summoned... Oh, well, there it is, folks. <laughs> this card's, card's bad. <laughs> what the fuck? Okay, you had one job, make it a level 5 or a 6, because all the other vampires are 5s and 6s. And then, a tribute summon isn't the end of the world, and we have, I think, what is it, Vampire Sorcerer that helps you with it or something? So, like, I don't even care what it does. It's a level... Why is it an 8? If this card is normal summoned... Ugh. You can target up the two monsters in your opponent's graveyard, special summon to your side of the field in defense mode, but negate their effects. Okay, cool. That makes up for all the shit you had a tribute for it, I guess. When a monster effect is activated, if that effect has the same name as a monster that's in either graveyard, negate that effect. Okay. If a monster is special summoned from your opponent's graveyard, you can tribute two monsters, special summon this card from your graveyard. You can only use each effect of this thing once per turn. Okay, so that last one's uh, real dumb. <laughs> I'm just gonna pass turn with two bodies on board, and then you're gonna summon something with, I don't know, 
uh, uh, Monster Reborn, and I'm gonna sack him for this asshole. The best effect on this card is probably that weird uh, negation effect. It kind of harks back to like Called by the Grave. It's never gonna work, but it is at least neat. This would actually be a cool card in like a weird mirror match, I guess. Um, Cause you could probably like set it up, I, I suppose. It might be neat, like, if you're, like, dumping hand traps to the grave, so that turns off your opponent's hand traps. Uh, that's cool, I guess. You could also mill an extra deck monster out of your extra deck uh, to the graveyard to make this thing live, to, to, to like, floodgate your opponent. That's kind of neat. Kind of like a... Almost like like almost like a, a, a main board cherries kind of thing. I, I, uh, I'm struggling over here, guys. It's a neat effect. It's just not very good because it requires some setup to get any kind of use out of it. But if you do... It's still a once per turn. Ugh. Yeah, uh, oh boy. Anyway, guys, that was the list. I hope you enjoyed it. What are you doing over there, Jerome? What's going on with this set, boy? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments below what you guys think. And remember, guys, if you don't troll the meta, who will? I'll see you guys next time. Just a quick special thank you to all my supporters over on Patreon. You guys make the whole channel possible. You guys have no idea how much it means to me that you guys do that. If you guys want to be part of the Goblet Attack Force, link for the Patreon down in the description below. Dueling takes both luck and skill. Show this by pressing the subscribe and notification buttons. Now, bear witness to these other Davinator 1212 videos. Hmm? Odeon! What is it, Master? It's time to apply the ointment. Uh, Come help me with this. I should have left with Ishizu. I can't reach.